This one comes from Facebook, and it's Heidi Myers. And Heidi would like to know, why aren't there any more outbreaks? Billions still live in poor sanitation and cramped quarters, cheek to cheek, with newcomers from lightly traveled areas. Bush meat is still eaten by many, and transportation is even faster than it ever was. It is due to vigilance. Oh, sorry. Is it due to vigilance, or are the diseases evolving into endemic conditions faster than they used to? Yeah. Her, her first sentence was... Why aren't there any more outbreaks? And that is incorrect. Well, I think she means <laughs> pandemics. That is incorrect. Okay. Uh, we just have been battling in the last four or five months, too. Uh, wait, who's we? Uh, we, the global community. The, the, the global community of yeah. disease fighters. Of disease fighters. <laughs> right. You guys are like the Justice League of viruses. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what Dan Brown says. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're, we've been fighting, too. One is uh, called... Uh, Sadly, H7N9, it's a form of influenza that emerged in China, seemingly out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Why do we always blame other countries for the start of influenza? And where's, the one, where's the one that like, has America written all over it? Do we call it something else? That would have been the H1N1 N1. swine flu of 2009. Why do we call that the, the United States virus? Well, it was American swine. Ooh. Oh, really? Was that the Ooh. technical name? Well... Cool. American swine. Sounds like a cool new punk group. <laughs> Just don't call it American woman. Okay. Okay. All right, and, so uh, I interrupt. Go on. So the H7N9 is an influenza that emerged in, first seen in Shanghai. And it was coincident with, in January, 20,000 pig carcasses floating through the Wangpu River, the central river of downtown Shanghai. That'd be like having 20,000 dead pigs come down the East River. So, so these in Shanghai, Shanghai are, which is by the way, would be an environmental improvement upon the East River. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So these are, we're, in the question, by the questioner, we're referring to squalid areas where there, why aren't there any outbreaks? That would not be Shanghai. It's Shanghai is pretty decked out. It's a truly advanced, uh, modern you know, city. super hyper modern city, 23 million people. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden along comes this virus. The connection to the dead pigs never established, very controversial inside China because pork is the number one protein source for most Chinese, so we're not going to talk about, you know, what might be in your pork. Um, but uh, that virus spread uh, all the way up to Beijing and all the way down close to Hong Kong and caused havoc and uh, seems to have stopped because they shut down the live animal markets. However, it also stopped coincident with what is weather-wise, usually the end of flu season. So we're all very anxiously waiting for next fall. Is this going to come back with ferocity? That one had a very high kill rate. It was around 25-26% of the people of who got the people it died. Who got it Holy died. moly. But that's not as bad as the one we're now very worriedly watching, which has another unfortunate dubbing. It's MERS-CoV, which stands for Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus. Oh god. Okay, right. Uh, but let's just call it MERS for the sake of argument. This is a virus that is genetically very close cousin to SARS. Remember that from 2003? I remember that. Spread to 31 countries. Um, Still have my mask from the SARS craze. <laughs> right? Still sporting it. He, he never, never gives up the old uh, antiquated devices. Um, so, oh, I won't go there. Um, so this MERS virus <laughs> emerged. It seems to be from Saudi Arabia. It seems to have originated possibly in the Al Hassa region, uh, which is an oasis in the desert uh, near Bahrain in the eastern part of uh, Saudi Arabia. So once again, not squalid areas. No. Okay. And a lot of the cases were in downtown Riyadh, urban, big city, the major you know, port of entry for people flying in and out of Saudi Arabia. What has people very concerned, and there's an emergency summit underway right now in Cairo, called by WHO. What has the World whole, Health Organization. World Health has the whole Middle East freaked out is that Umrah, which kicks off Ramadan, yes. is just a couple weeks away. That's right. And then in early October, you have the Hajj. On both occasions, you have mass Islamic pilgrimages to Saudi Arabia. So if you've got a respiratory virus that is <laughs> transmissible. Wow. By air. Air by horn. air. Mm -hmm. And by close contact. Like kissing. Like being in the Hajj, elbow to elbow, oh. going around 
the tomb of Mohammed repeatedly with millions of people, um, then you have potential for serious spread. Man, that's a party I don't want to go to. Yeah, well, and, it, and the problem is the Hajj has a long history of being a time for disease to spread. Um, and it is the responsibility of the Saudi state to ensure that this religious pilgrimage is safe See. for all in yeah, Otherwise world. it becomes a communal bath that oh. everyone takes in, in disease. Look, so I, basically I don't think for Heidi's uh, question, squalid conditions, not all that bad of a thing, <laughs> no, right? No, I don't not worry the about problem. it. Don't worry about it. Not the problem. Plus, I, I don't think that's Muhammad's tomb. I think it, there's a stone inside of there. It's oh, a it's, sacred stone. You're right. Yeah. I stand correct.